Hey y'all, good morning. It's Tammy with Collard Valley, I mean, with Real Southern Woman. Um, I've got my computer on, so it's kind of shining in my face, but today I wanted to uh, talk a little bit extra on the doctrine of God because uh, the book, in my opinion, on the doctrine of God and the doctrine of the Bible, you know, it's a little vague, but it's supposed to be because we're just hitting the highlights. But it, um, to me, it just, you know, we just need to add a little bit of something to it. So anyway, we'll talk a little bit about what's in our book, The Doctrine of God, and then we will um, use the Blue Letter Bible to talk a little bit more about God's attributes, okay? So we have The Doctrine of God. Um, he actually gives us a reading from C.S. Lewis, and if you know anything about C.S. Lewis, you know that his writings are really hard to comprehend and understand. My husband is smart enough to do it, but I'm going to be honest with you, I am not. So the example he gives us at the beginning of this chapter um, in the writing goes right over my head. And I try to reread it, and it still goes over my head. It just confuses me. So C.S. Lewis is just one of those people that... Um, like I said, you got to have a lot of knowledge to understand what he pins down, okay? Um, so we're not going to talk about uh, that part of the Bible study. It says the doctrine of the Bible uh, has four major divisions, and they are existence, attributes, sovereignty, and trinity. So I am going to, like I said, I'm going to use the Blue Letter Bible and go into these a little bit uh, more so you have a better understanding of them. But the first one is existence, E-X-I-S-T-E-N-C-E. -E -E. Now, um, the existence is just the fact that God exists. And let me just say this. Um, it says the central passage is, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made. And that comes out of Romans chapter 1, verse 20. Now, um, really and truly, in order to believe that God exists, you just have to actually have faith. Because God is not something that you can see, okay, or hear with your, you know, with your ears. Uh, now you can see Him and hear Him in the Bible, but it's hard to um, get a grasp on who God is um, unless you just believe that there is a God. Um, so I'm going to read this little excerpt on the attributes of God. Okay. And these are, there's proof texts and um, I'm just going to read these to y'all because I like them. Okay. The first one is Exodus because they use different ones in the Blue Letter Bible than we, we get here in our book. The first one is Exodus 34, 6 through 7. And it says, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and, trans and transgression of sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. Exodus 34, verses 6 through 7. These are proof texts. The second one is Psalms 25, verse 8. And it says, Good and upright is the Lord. Okay. The third one is James 1, 17. And it says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. 
So I just thought uh, y'all might want to hear some of those because, I mean, there's lots of proof texts, and that is those proof texts are on his goodness, okay? Um, here's some group, uh, uh, proof texts on his eternal, uh, eternality, I guess you could say. It's Exodus 3.14, and God says to Moses, I am who I am. Now, I'm going to quit giving you the reference to these, and I'm just going to start reading the scripture because it, it gives you an, <clears throat> an idea of who God is and what he has to say, okay? So he says, and God says to Moses, I am who I am, but you, O Lord, shall endure forever and the remembrance of your name to all generations. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. <coughs> All right, those are eternality ones. Here's grace proofs, okay, which is very important for us that are living in the grace age. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, gracious in all of his works. Through him we have received grace in the apostleship for obedience to the faith among the nations in his name. We being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by one Jesus Christ abounded to many, moreover the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. Those are all um, proof texts on God's grace. Now we're kind of going through his, his um, attributes. Then he has an attribute of holiness, okay? And it says, then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, and he was afraid to look upon God. No one is holy like the Lord. The Lord is is great in Zion, and he is high above all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. That's pretty, isn't it? Those are proof texts of his holiness, proof texts of his eminence. I am a God near, no, it says, am I a God near at hand, says the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can anyone hide himself in secret places so I shall not see him, says the Lord? Do I not feel the heaven and the earth? He is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being in God. According to the word that I covenanted, co covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. Those are proofs of his eminence, which means he's with us. His immutability. This means he doesn't change his mind, um, his characteristics, his plan, or anything else. Okay? And it says, For I am the Lord, I do not change. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Okay, these are proofs of his justice, and there's a lot of these. 
because our God is just. He's not only perfect, but he's also just, so he judges, okay? Um, and it says, far be it from you to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be as the wicked, far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiven iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. And that's scary, but that is a verse that talks about his justice. Um, however, you are just in all that has befallen us. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? The king's strength also loves justice. You have established equity and you have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do they not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. The last one is the Father without partiality judges according to each one's work. Conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear. We're supposed to fear the Lord. The only way we're going to uh, be... Uh, held accountable and and feel you know like we need to be judged is to be to have fear of God it says love these are these are proofs of his love okay the Lord did not set his love on you nor choose you because you were more in number than any other people for you were the least of all peoples but because the Lord loves you and because he would keep an oath which you swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Okay, this is another one. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. I read that one twice. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, neither height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ our Lord. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us, God abides in him, and who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Those are the attributes of love proof texts. Now we have mercy. There's so many attributes of God, okay? That's why I chose to read it out of here, because it goes into more detail than our book does. Um, our mercy texts are, Return, O Lord, deliver, O save me, for your mercy's sake. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had prepared beforehand for glory, even us whom he called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. God, who is rich in mercy, not only, uh, no, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. And the last one is, blessed be to God the, and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a loving hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. His omnipotence, <laughs> um, which means he has an unlimited power to accomplish anything, okay? They say, for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. God's Son upholds all things by the word of his power. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me, nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. With God, all things are possible. But our God is in heaven. He does what he pleases. <laughs> I love this one because uh, this one reminds me of how we ought to pray. You know, and a lot of people say, you have not because you ask not. Well, that might be so, but you hear what he just said. Our God is in heaven and he does what he pleases. And I think a lot of us don't realize who we are compared to him when we pray for a lot, when we think he's supposed to revolve everything around us personally. Um, and to me, he does what he pleases. Okay. And uh, we should pray for his will. Okay. We should trust him and have faith in him enough to, to accept what his will is for us too. All right. Omnipresence. It means that God is everywhere, present in the fullness of his being. And here's the scripture for that, okay? But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. You can search out deep things. Oh, can you search out deep things of God? Can you find out the limits of the Almighty? They are higher than heaven. What can you do? Deeper than she uh, Sheol, which is hell. What can you know? Their measure is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. That is the things of God. Okay? Um, it says, I am a God, am I a God near at hand, says the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can anyone hide himself in secret places so I shall not see him, says the Lord? Do I not fill the heaven and the earth? says the Lord. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your spirit? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me. And your right hand shall hold me. That's very, very uh, encouraging to know our God is everywhere. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Now, um, I've been reading these scriptures this whole time, and that set of scriptures is the first time I've gotten chills. And I always think, I mean, I don't know if y'all agree with me or not, but I always feel like when the Holy Spirit gets stirred up in you, um, now I'm not, I'm sorry, but I'm not one of these that speak in tongues or anything like that. I personally don't, uh, I've never seen it and really don't believe in it that much, but I do believe the Holy Spirit lives in us all the time. And he's always here, but it's up to us whether or not we feed him and, uh, and sometimes we can quench it. And it's funny that I've been reading the scripture that, you know, since we sat down here, a computer just went, screen went off. 
And that's the first time I got chills when reading, was reading about the text that God is everywhere present in the fullness of his being. So apparently the Holy Spirit really liked that text when I was reading it out loud because I could feel it. Um, not that he didn't like the rest of it, but maybe I'm just now waking him up good, right? It says um, omniscience. Omniscience means that God uh, is omnis omniscient. Omniscient. It's so hard to say some of these words to me. Uh, we we mean that he knows all there is to know. He knows everything. That's another reason when I pray, I pray for his will. Because not, God knows more than we do, way more than we do. And he knows better than we do. So we should have faith. In other words, if we believe the word of God, then we should have confidence that God is all-knowing, has the best plan for us. Even if it's something bad we're going through, he's still in control. And we should give him the credit for it. And we should always know that he knows best instead of us. We shouldn't, we shouldn't be asking him to change things. I don't think. I'm sorry. I just don't. It says omniscience, proof texts. God's understanding is infinite. Then the spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said to me, speak. Thus says the Lord, thus you have said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that you come, that come into your mind. Known to God from all eternity are all his works. Oh, the depth of his riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Wow, listen to that. That was a, That's an amazing scripture, isn't it? And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Well, we should use that verse for fearing the Lord, right? Because that is plain and just spells it out, don't it? It says, God will judge the secret things of men by Jesus Christ, according to Paul's gospel. The next one is righteousness. It says, far be it from you to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making the wise simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, gracious in all his works. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord exercising love and kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these I delight, says the Lord. That is just awesome scripture. Now, what we're studying today is God and who God is. And, um, you know, the first, the, the lesson from yesterday was the Bible. And um, really the Bible and God, these two doctrines, you've just got to believe and have faith that the Bible's a real book written by and pinned down by the men uh, through the Holy Spirit, which is God. So you've got to believe that it's God's book. And then you've got to believe that there is a God. And um, so what I'm doing today is just reading you the scripture because uh, it does help show us um, who he is. This is his self-existence. Um, he existed eternally and will always exist. It's what this scripture is about, okay? 
And God said to Moses, I am who I am. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. In the beginning, this is my, my favorite, one of my favorite verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. For as the Father he Oh, for as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on the earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Now that lets us know that he has created everything we can see and everything we can't see. It also lets us know that, of course, he created the angels. And that those angels were created for him. But, of course, we have the fallen angels and Satan. And, um, but... When they were created, they were created for God. But God is in control of them regardless. Um, sovereignty. This is, tells of God's divine control over everything that happened. So I'm going to love these because I just so believe that he is. And it says, Blessed be Abram of God, most high, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God, most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. Now, I know that the Lord is greater than all the gods. But our God is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. I think I'm going to make that my life verse. But our God is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. And it makes me happy to read that verse. Um, there are... Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will? Now, this is one Chris talks about a lot. It talks about the sparrows and the birds and how not even a sparrow dies without it being God's will. Okay? Uh, but keep in mind they do die, and they do get hit by cars, and they do pass away. So, understand that it's our will Sometimes to get sick and die. It's our, I mean, his will, not our will. Um, so don't think that just because he takes care of the sparrows, then he automatically just takes care of us because he also lets them die, okay? It says, it says, are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will, Okay. Uh, for he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. I've never even heard that. Or I mean, I'm sure I've read it. Let's say that comes out of Romans chapter 9. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. So that just shows that God does what he pleases, doesn't it? In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will. For it is better, if it is the will of God, to suffer for doing good than doing evil. See? So I think a lot of us should accept where we are in life and accept the sufferings we are given and accept the sickness we have and accept death even because it is God's will and we should trust him more than we do. All right, this is his trans transcendence and this is the last uh, attribute 
And it says it refers to the fact that God is unlike any other being in our experience. And so no an, an analogy or comparison can come close to perfectly describing him. And that's true. I've sat here and gave you attributes of God. But God is so powerful and so big and so extraordinary that we can't even comprehend who he is. And so um, I'm, these are our last verses for his attributes. And they're supposed to, you know, let us know that. And it says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And that's the very reason to me we should trust him. Um, for thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Who is like the Lord our God who dwells on high? who humbles himself to behold the things that are in the heavens and in the earth. And he said unto them again, I am going away, and you will seek me, and you will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. You are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. That's God. He is not of this world, is he? So um, I just wanted to, to uh, go through this. Now, y'all have the book. I know I've read a lot of scripture this morning. Thanks to those who love the Lord enough to want to hear his attributes. Instead of it just aggravating people and them not want to hear it, they should long to hear the attributes of our God. They should be excited to hear the attributes of our God. And, of course, we have plenty of people that do not care for the things of God because they're of the world. So um, you have to be spiritual. You really have to be spiritual to want to hear spiritual things uh, because it's not in our nature to want to hear it, okay? So our um, lesson this week, I mean today, was the doctrine of God, and there's the existence, the attributes, which is what we just went through in detail, the sovereignty and the trinity. And so uh, I'm just going to touch the highlight the existence is that god exists the attributes the fundamental characteristics of god number three sovereignty god can do whatever he wills four trinity god is three persons yet one and we know that's god the father god the son and god the holy spirit okay um, the central passage on that one they've got listed is, uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Now, I will, I'm going to say this because um, understand, y'all, that I do, I am primarily a Baptist belief, Okay. But now these doctrines I am teaching you today are of the Christian faith, okay? So if you're a Christian, um, you should, you know, you should be able to follow the Bible doctrine. Um, and there are going to always be small things uh, or what I think are important things that you may not think is pertains to your um, religion, so to speak, Um just like what I said earlier about speaking in tongues. Don't get mad at me because I don't speak in tongues. Um, I grew up with a first cousin who spoke in tongues. And I remember when we were kids, she thought if I didn't speak in tongues that I couldn't be saved. And I just don't believe that way. And I don't think that there's scriptural uh, passages to back it up. And I personally, I, needed to I need to talk to you all about this. But it's going to be another lesson. Because to me, if the Apostle Paul didn't speak in tongues, then he didn't. And he even talks about why he did. Uh, why in the world would we? You know, I think it was a, a time in the Bible that was appropriate for the time. And I just personally do not believe that it happens. Um, and when it happened, uh, I think it was meant for people to understand them. 
So, I mean, to me, if the Apostle Paul, who wrote all these books in the Bible, and he was a missionary, and he was a Christian, just like we are today, saved through grace, um, didn't speak in tongues, I'm not sure why they think that we should or can even. And I personally believe the Holy Spirit is in with me with me from the time of my salvation because that's what the book tells me. That's what Christ's word tells me, that the Holy Spirit comes to live in me upon salvation, not baptism, and that he is with me always. And I believe that he is, and I believe that the Holy Spirit guides me. I believe that he helps me know right from wrong. I believe that he helps me discern the scripture when I read the Bible. And um, so I don't think it's something that I just get, you know, of course, I can wake him up a little bit like, you know, you've been in church and listen to songs and in your spirit, uh, you can just tell is resonating inside of you. Um, and just like when you read the scripture and the other night when I was reading the Bible, I was sitting there reading the Bible and it's just so good to me and it's just so wonderful to me. And I think, why do people hate it so much? And why do people not want to pick it up? And why? And I, the only reason why is because it's it's not of the world, and we're of the world. So it's not normal for us to pick up the Bible at all. It's just not normal. Even if we're Christians, it's not normal. Unless we uh, decide that we're going to put ourselves aside and grow spiritually, okay? Let's say our prayers and... Um, Oh, she wants to know which verse was it about God doing what he pleases. I'll look it up right quick, Belda. Sorry, I already closed my computer, but it'll come up quick. Yeah, that's a good one, ain't it, Belda? I love it. I love the fact that God does what he pleases. I love it. Y'all, I'm so, I am so faithful when it comes to God that I'm, I'm not kidding. I want him to take me home when it's time for him to take me home, not when I want to go home. I love him so much and trust him so much that I truly believe that verse. I really believe it. He does what he pleases, and he should do what he pleases. He's our God. Any God that can do what he has done, just look outside and look at one flower. Any God that can create a flower and create birds and create our bodies and create our soul and give us a spirit and give us a way into his heaven that we're going to go and see glorious things. Any God, I mean, he is our God. He's so much more than we give him credit for, and we don't fear him near enough, and we should trust him more than we do instead of worrying about our little selves all the time. Um, it just drives me crazy. Okay, let's see. That verse is... Just give me a minute. Here it is. Psalms 115, verse 3. Psalms 115, verse 3. But our God is in heaven. Semicolon. He does what he pleases. Praise the Lord, right? Praise the Lord God Almighty for doing what he pleases and not what men please. Praise the Lord. That's all I got to say. He is our God. I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. All right. Let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you for all of these ladies who stuck it out and listened to all of your characteristics. Um and your attributes, because you are holy, you are a God that we should fear. We should open our eyes and ears to your word and trust in you. If you know when one sparrow falls, then of course you know when we fall. And we should trust you with our life, our future, um, and don't live in our past, but know that um, you're the God of second chances and looking forward to our lives here on this earth.
But we do look forward to seeing you as well and being in your heaven. Thank you for providing a way through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm taking my dogs to the groomer this morning. Believe it or not, you know, I usually do it. And I have decided since Chris is gone, I'm taking my two larger dogs to the groomer. So I get to pick them up all smelly and beautiful today. And um, I think I'm going to take care of Marcy myself. She's so small. But um, I have a very long video from last night on CBC. It's an hour long on Facebook. I'm going to break it up into parts today and post it um, on my YouTube channel so that the buttercream will be in a section and the ganache will be in a section, etc., etc. Because it's way too long. But y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day, and I hope that I get a lot done today. And um, thanks for tuning in and listening to um, what God has to say. Bye. Love you.